Hey folks, how goes it out there in coronavirus crazy land? We are in a strange time, aren't we? I know. And everybody and your mama is going live. And there is only so much time in the day to watch live videos. And so why does Shelly think she needs to go live too on top of everybody else? Is that what you're thinking? Well, it's what I'm thinking, but I can't let go of this idea that has just been in my heart for days now. Hey, Rhonda Richards, good to see you. And I started not to go live to do it and then uh, just tape it and, and interact with y'all that way, but um, I just can't get away from the idea that the whole world needs some more humor right now and we need um, more than anything, we need Jesus. We need some inspiration. And so I was trying to figure out what to do about this and what my little bitty smile part could be. So, cut to the chase. What I have decided to do is just film some things for you, maybe similarly, semi-regularly. And I don't know if I'll do it or not. So I thought I can't do a big deal and, and set up something. So this is right here at my desk where I am all the time, all the time, all the time. And I'm just gonna throw the camera up and go live from here and do some reading for y'all. So I've been like petitioning the Lord, like what should I do? How should I do this? If indeed you're the one kind of pressing on me to do it. And it, it felt right. And it felt like the Lord was moving me to do this. Many times when I'm speaking, or every time when I'm speaking, I always start with humor, and then I bring a devotional thought, right? Well, I'm having to cancel so many events this spring for my new book. Hold on, I should have had this one over here. Uh, okay, they'll be shorter ever, every other time. This one is kind of a longer uh, introductory idea. So this is the book that's just out, Finding Deep and Wide, Stop Settling for the Life You Have and Live the One Jesus Died to Give You. And I almost read um, from it. And I may still do that, but that's not what I'm gonna do right now. What I'm gonna do for the foreseeable future, no promises, I don't know how long I'll do this, but for the foreseeable future, uh, the videos will be really short because I'm going to read a little bit of humor to you and then I'm going to read to you from Devotions for the Hungry Heart because it has a very short devotional every day. So I've picked out a short excerpt from this as well and in the days to come, uh, this is what I hope to do. Oh, I touched my face. I know. I'll go wash my hands in a minute. <laughs> but I'm the only one here and, and I don't think I just infected myself from... Anyway, carrying on, I'll be doing this first reading from Suck Your Stomach In and Put Some Color On, What Southern Mamas Tell Their Daughters That the Rest of Y'all Should Know Too. I decided to start at the beginning because the first chapter is Dry It Up. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of reasons that we need to dry it up right now. Hey, Debbie and Pat, I've already said hello to Rhonda. Would y'all just invite some people to join us if you have an extra finger to do that? That would be great. Um, the more the merrier, as they say. All right, so the subtitle is What Southern Mamas Tell Their Daughters About Life, Faith, and Education with Main Dish Recipes Southerners Refuse to Live Without. My mother's teenage marriage ended badly. 40 years later, her second one continues to thrive. When Mama's prince and my papa, the only daddy I've ever known, brought us to live on his farm in Northeast Louisiana, she was a young 22-year-old with three little girls, Cynthia Darlene, Rhonda Arlene, and Shelly Charlene. That's me. Ages five, three, and two. You did see those middle names, didn't you? That was before people fell for the whole natural childbirth thing. Back then, heavy meds and semi-conscious deliveries were all the rage. I blamed the drugs for the whole Darlene, Arlene, and Charlene thing. Either that or Mama was hoping we'd become a famous country music act like the Mandrell sisters. 
Unfortunately, my sisters were one singing sibling short of a trio. That'd be me again. Come to think of it, Barbara and Louise were also one sis short on harmony, and her name rhymes with ours. Sorry, Arlene, but that has got to be a sign. I'm not sure what it means, but give me some time and I'll get back to you. We Southerners pride ourselves on being able to tie everything to a sign. I don't know that for certain. The part about Arlene not being able to sing, that's just what my sisters used to say to harass me back when the highlight of our Saturday nights in the country was watching Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell sisters. See, Shelley, one of them would say, Barlene, Barbara and Louise both do solos, but you don't see them give Arlene one. They just flash the camera to her, banging on the drums every now and again. I said it then and I'll say it now. Whatever. I loved Arlene. She seemed so happy just to be a part of it all, much as I would have enjoyed being a part of our family sing-alongs around the piano. But no, everyone always seemed to tire of singing about the time I would join in. Coincidence? I think not. I'd like my family to know that I have managed to survive without any emotional scars from those painful experiences. Why sometimes I go for months without even thinking about it. All right, that will be the link of the humor excerpt every day, um, not daily. I don't know how often I'll do this, but that will be the length of it, and then I'll read you a devotional, okay? This again comes from Devotions for the Hungry Heart, Chasing Jesus Six Days from Sunday. Monday, a hungry heart is surrendered. I ran across a fascinating story about the late newspaper publisher, William Randolph Hearst. I want to share it with you because of the tremendous truth it holds. As the story goes, the extremely wealthy Mr. Hearst was an avid art collector who spared no expense in acquiring costly artifacts from all over the world. One day, after reading about some exceedingly rare items, Mr. Hearst decided he simply had to have them in his possession. So he sent an assistant around the world in search of them. Mr. Hearst was determined to discover who owned these items and how much it would cost him to acquire them. Finally, after months of searching, Mr. Hearst's employee reported that the treasure had been found in a warehouse belonging to Mr. Hearst. Yes. That's right, Mr. Hurst had been willing to pay whatever cost was involved for treasure he already owned. If only he had scanned the inventory list of his own blessings. Friends, I believe that's a picture of us as believers, especially the American church, which has been so well fed on God's word. We are constantly looking for that extra something, that latest devotional, the newest translation, when everything we really need to live a fruitful Christian life lives within us. We are rich in Christ Jesus. We have all we need to partner with God in the sanctification process through Jesus, Emmanuel, the hope of glory. Don't panic at that word sanctification. Just think of it as being transformed through growth. How will we do this? How will we partner with God to see the manifestation of the gift of Christ within us? The word teaches that our lives rise or fall on our individual wills. We'll be ineffective, so-so saints, never changing, never growing, or We'll be constantly in the process of being transformed and being made new and exploring the riches that are ours in Christ Jesus. And this will hinge on whether we live with our wills surrendered to God. John 12, 24 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And that's it. So I will see you next time. 
and I won't even say when next time is because I have no idea. <laughs> None. You don't either, do you? All right. I see your little hearts going up. Oh, my goodness. That blesses me. I see your little hearts now. Oh, and Pat uh, says she's read it, but great to hear you read it. Thank you, Pat. Um, I'm not going to slide back through there because I don't want to take any more time. I was committed. Okay, when I say slide back through there, y'all are not in my head, Shelly. What I meant was there are messages on the screen, and I'm not going to slide back through them right now. I will do that later because I am committed to keeping these really brief, and I hope that that was really brief for you. And I pray that you got at least a smile out of the first book and a good dose of Jesus Christ in the second one. All right. I'll see you later. Bye. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. I don't want to add to the noise. I just want to help. Thank you. Bye.